my God, I'm sick of my 20s. I'm so sick of people telling me to enjoy them. They're not fun. They are 10 years of asking yourself, will I outgrow this or is it a problem? <laughs> like, is this a phase or a demon? I just need to know. Like, am I fun or should I go to a meeting? Someone help me. Oh, Taylor, wait till your 40s. That is the always <laughs> funny Taylor Tomlinson performing stand-up for her first hour-long Netflix special. It was called Quarter Life Crisis. She's a rising star in the world of comedy, best known for her self-deprecating humor and references to mental health, and all of it is getting noticed. In 2021, she made the prestigious Forbes 30 Under 30, and a year later, Time featured her on its Time 100 Next list. Now Tomlinson has been hitting the road for her Have It All tour, and only on CBS Mornings, Taylor Tomlinson joins us now. Taylor, welcome. Thank you so much for having <laughs> the me. Midlife like com the Midlife Tour is going to be even better, but <laughs> yeah. you're great right now. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. So good, in fact, that you are headlining Radio City. Yeah. Which is something that, uh, to name a few comedians, Chelsea Handler has done, Chris mm -hmm. Rock has done, Jerry Seinfeld has done, Dave, yeah. Dave uh, Chappelle has done. You're really setting me up to fail here. I like, mean, a couple what's people it like? have done it. Legends. <laughs> Jeez. What are you doing there? Gosh. <laughs> I mean, like, what do you, when you think about your name and those names, how do you feel? I mean, look, I've just been hanging out under that sign all weekend <laughs> yeah. going, do you guys know who that is? <laughs> it's me. I, I, I might yeah. be. And everyone's like, can you get out of the way? Uh, you know, I can't believe, I, I used to live in New York part-time and I used to walk by Radio City all the time and think like, yeah, maybe someday, like maybe in 10 years when I belong in that list of names you just rattled off. But yeah, the fact that we're doing not one but two shows this weekend is like crazy to me. And this all began... And they're sold out, Taylor. So, oh. Sunday there's a few tickets left, but okay. yeah, yeah, Saturday In the sold nosebleed out. section, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, and this all began in a church basement following stand-up classes, do I have that right? Yes, I took a, a stand-up class from a church comedian, which is a thing. It sounds okay. like it's made up, but it is it real. It is a thing. There's a church circuit, as it turns <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not a huge one, but there is. So that's <laughs> why I started. What, do you, what made you want to take that class? I think a woman at church, I was 16, so a woman at our church was like, you should go to this with your daughter. She likes to write, right? Like, that might be good. Um, but yeah, I, did, I didn't even know stand-up was a job when I was yeah. a teenager. Mm. So I, like, really needed a class or something to well, tell me it was possible. I will say this to people, if they haven't seen your Netflix comedy specials, please go and see, because what I like about your humor, it's so relatable, mm -hmm. whether it's black, white, young, old, a couple of things, she says. Rough years, I've had a couple of rough years. I got bangs, people are texting me, asking me, am I okay? <laughs> uh, the moment when you say, well, maybe it's me. My five past guys that I've dated say, said, you behave like a raccoon trapped in a trash bag. You have issues, <laughs> been there. The other one you said, mental illness. A friend of yours said, mental illness is like your middle name. I didn't know what it was, but I knew you had one. Yeah. This is the thing you do, Taylor. You take stuff that could be uncomfortable mm -hmm. and difficult and very personal. You talk about your mother's death and you figure out a way to bring comedy to it. How are you able to do that? Oh, I don't and think- And what did it take to do that? I, it definitely took a few years. I think when I was younger, I had written some of those jokes that you referenced about losing my mom. I had written some of those in my early 20s and I just didn't have the maturity as a performer to pull them off. I mean, audiences already kind of feel bad for you when yes. you're that age. Like, yes. they're a little impressed that you're public speaking as a yeah. young person. Like, mm -hmm. it, like, public speaking as a young person is like, being a dog that can skateboard. Everybody's like impressed, but they're like, why are, why are you doing that? Why are you up there? Yes. It's like, is he good at it? He's like, not really, but he's a dog. He shouldn't be doing it at all. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it definitely took a few years to get to a place where I, I could make that work in front of audiences all over the country. So yeah. it, you just have to really like know who you are and, yes. and really be okay with it. Yeah, and, and you're okay with talking about your family quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. um, so do you give them a warning before you add them into your set? Yeah. And how do they respond when they actually see? Before the... before I tape it, I always run it by family members. I don't think jokes are worth losing relationships mm. over. Mm. I have a hard time making friends as an adult, so I'm like, we can't lose family can't members. Can't sacrifice it. No, 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 can't sacrifice <laughs> it. Um, but very rarely has anyone said, please don't talk about that. Ah, so I'm, okay. I'm lucky in that way. 
uh, let's talk about you and pictures of you as a kid. Because yeah. something you do on Instagram is post <laughs> them and then write the captions. And we've got some of them. This one involving, I don't know, a star for some reason. I mean, that kid thought she was really going to be somebody. <laughs> and with and that. She was right. Yeah. 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 And it turns out to be 100% right. accurate. Against all odds. Like, do you remember the year in elementary school that you're like, I found my look? Yeah. <laughs> it's these flowy sleeves and this greasy half ponytail. And what is that, the hula skirt? That's the last time I went to a party. <laughs> That's the last time I wore a bikini. Yeah. And I really look like I'm living it up, though. You're raging uh, look like right you're there. having I'm a good raging. time. That is a long night there. Yeah. And we have me also, if you have anything uh, to say. I remember when I cut my own bangs. <laughs> <laughs> we all did it. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of look like a dad on vacation. We, we, we've, all, we've all done that. Yeah. Tony, that haircut is amazing. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, Nate, you actually so... look pretty cool. Oh, you look thank like, you. You look like your reasoning was so You someone. are locked in on the camera. She, I'm like, oh, you got yeah. the hand gestures? Taylor, look at his hands. I was I really good at convincing people what look I wanted. Look at his hands, yeah. even then. And my closing argument for staying awake longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's look, exactly what it is. It does was. look like that. Aww. Oh, I mean, okay. these are just great photos. Like, I was so upset because I got sent photos of you guys as kids before the show, peek behind the curtain, for people who don't understand <laughs> television. And I thought we were gonna do funny photos, and they just sent me great ones. Like, I... Uh, I think the bangs on, and the headband and the big teeth and the big legs, I think that's pretty funny. I think you're pulling <laughs> off the bangs. Oh, okay. I really do. Like. I, I realized I brought in pictures that were taken on like digital cameras, so we we could take bad photos. Yeah. And these are like, oh, we kept the good ones. But Gail, but, these these are both your your stages as a journalist. It's hey, nice to meet you. So great to have you. And then the we, I have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few things. To I say. have a follow up. I, I have yeah. a follow up. Yeah. But Taylor, this is what they say about you, New York Times. She demonstrates tight joke writing and a ruthless appetite for laughs. Uh, Tomlinson has a strange honor of being one of the breakout stars of this pandemic. And Tomlinson works with the intensity of someone who learned early in life that life can be short. Mm. Bravo, bravo. Bravo is right. How does bravo. it feel? I mean, you were like a rocket shooting up. Oh, that's so Keep nice. soaring. I mean, it's so funny to be called like a strange case of being <laughs> successful during the pandemic. Because when COVID hit, my special had just come out, my first Taylor. one. Yeah. They're giving me the big oh. computer taking us off uh, countdown, and I want to say the name of it. The Have It All Tour continues nationwide November 18th.